All right, everyone. So good morning. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. If you're joining us for the first time, we're all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. And all November long, we've been featuring amazing stories from people across the globe. We've been in Indonesia, in the Arctic. We just wrapped up a session in Kenya earlier today. It has been so exciting to share these amazing stories with you live on camera and at home as you continue to tune in on YouTube. So thank you to all of you. So today we're going back to our favorite place. We have been there more than any other place we've ever uh, worked with over our five years of operation, the Turtle Hospital in Marathon, Florida. So in the Florida Keys, since 1986, they have been working to rescue, rehabilitate, and re-release injured sea turtles and do a huge deal of work in educating the public about the importance of sea turtles and what they can do to help them out as well. So I'm thrilled to welcome in Christine. She's going to take us away. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Christine, and let's do it. All right. So welcome. My name again is Christine. I'm going to be your educator. I'm going to tell you about the species of sea turtles we have here and some of the things we do for them. So before me here is a loggerhead turtle. Now they get to be about 450 pounds and three and a half feet long. Uh, they like to eat hard shell invertebrates. They like their lobsters, crabs, horseshoe crabs, and even conch shells. They have very powerful jaws, but for such a big head, they have a tiny little brain. It is only the size of your thumb. That's it. But they have very powerful jaws. Their bite force is almost the same as a great white shark. Now, this is Matthew. She was rescued May of this year. And yes, I did say Matthew and I did say she. Uh, actually, the only way you could tell a male from a female by looking at them is once they're over the age of around 25. Adult males have really thick fat tails that extend past their shell or carapace when females have these itty bitty little tails. So the top part of their shell is called a carapace and the underneath side is called a palastron. And each one of those individual sections on their shell, they're called scoots. Now, Matthew came in in May, and she was hit by a propeller prop. Um, it was not very nice to her. It was already healed when she got here, but she is also missing a back flipper. And not sure if that was due to the boat strike at all on her left side there. But you can see she has no problem swimming. Uh, they actually use their front flippers to propel forward, and they use their back flippers to steer with. So they do learn to compensate over time. And say she's an adult female, which she is, and she needs to nest on a beach somewhere someday, she can still do that. They go through the whole motions of having an invisible flipper, but they get up there and they get it done. And one of the things about Matthew is she has something called bubble butt syndrome. Now, we actually seen the first recorded uh, issue with this in 1986 and we have the original bubble butt what happens is air and gases sometimes can escape and get trapped inside of them and sometimes your shell will grow deformity where the air and gas gets trapped and it creates like a buoyancy issue it's like putting a life jacket on with a life jacket on these turtles can't be returned back to the wild they can't get down to forage for their food so the round things on the back of her are what we call lead weights you kind of see them on the back there now, there is no mathematical equation on how much lead weight to put on a bubble butt. It's trial and error. We'll attach Velcro strips to their shell, put lead weights on Velcro. Once we find out how much lead weight, then they'll be applied with a marine epoxy. They usually have to be dry docked a little while in order to give that epoxy time to dry. But this way, the lead's not touching their shell, and it's not exposed in the water for the longer period of time. But unfortunately for her, with those lead weights on, she cannot be returned back to the ocean because their shell is made of the same stuff your fingernail is, which is keratin. So over time, as her shell grows, those lead weights are going to fall off. And she would starve to death out in the wild, not being able to get down to get her food. So this is her, what we call home, until we find her what we call more forever home. The turtles like her that cannot go back to the wild, they also serve as another purpose for us here. They are our blood donors. Now, they don't have AB blood types like we do, but it has to be species to species. And so loggerheads to loggerheads, they can donate blood, greens to greens, hawksbills to hawksbills. So she's going to be with us until she maybe goes to another zoo or aquarium one day. She's what we consider a non-releasable turtle. Good morning, beautiful. It's coming up to say hi to y'all. Over here is Chomper. Now, this is actually a pretty uh, amazing turtle who has a very large fan base, actually. Because Chomper came in back in September. And he had, or she had, a tumor. Now, due to the poor water pollution, 
down here of pesticides, fertilizers, oil spills. A lot of these turtles that come in are green turtles with something called fibropapilloma tumors on them. And it's a herpes-like virus that grows around their eyes and they can't see, mouths they can't hear, eat, I mean, mouths they can't eat, and flippers they can't swim. Well, Chomper, it's turtle's name, came in with the largest tumor, and I'm going to show you the picture. It was a 14.2-pound tumor on its flipper there. Can you imagine trying to swim with that? It'd be pretty difficult. And one of the ways we knew he was sick is, look at that shell. He was all covered in algae and growth all over his shell. That told us that that's a sick turtle. Normally, they'd be swimming along, and the fish would be picking off a lot of the stuff that wants to grow on their shell. The fish are looking for a free meal of, like, leeches and algae and all kinds of stuff. They have a whole habitat on their shell of worms. And so when this turtle came in, one, it had the largest tumor. Two, it is not a green turtle. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time, I would say it's green turtles that come in with the tumors on them. But this is a loggerhead. And what it is, these turtles are so little, a lot of times they don't have that immune system built up. And so they break out into that virus. And this turtle was hit by a boat. There is a propeller strike on the back of his shell. And maybe that might have been what brought the immune system down of this loggerhead. There's also something what we call blood bugs out there. Uh, like we have lice and ticks of the wild that spread diseases. Well, there are leeches in the ocean. There are sea leeches that actually can spread diseases as well. At first, we tried to just remove the tumor and save the flipper. We did physical therapy. We did laser therapy. We even did something called leech therapy, which is actually freshwater medically leeches we order. And they have to go on the flipper and they suck the blood and hope get circulation going. But after about a week, we were not able to save that flipper. So we actually had to amputate it. But hopefully in a couple months, with tumor, tumor free, with no regrowth of tumors, Chomper will be able to go back to the wild. Chomper also has to have something called a nebulizer treatment daily. Trying to swim with that big old tumor on his flipper was not very easy. And so we had to, uh, he wouldn't come up for a full breath of air. He got salt water in his lungs, which created a lung infection. And so Chomper has to get a nebulizer treatment every day. He gets a cone on his face and it blows in a mist of air but or medication. But the problem you have with turtles, they can hold their breath for a long period of time. So you kind of got to stimulate them on the back and get them to take in that breath of medication into their lungs. And uh, Chomper's getting there. He's got a long road to recovery, though. Not a very big loggerhead. Now, the way you tell a turtle's age, it goes by the size of their shell and how much they weigh. They get put in a category of whether they're a hatchling, post-hatchling, juvenile, sub-adult, or adult turtle. And let's go see another turtle over here. Over here is Rob. Uh, Rob, let's see, I got Kiki, and I got Charlie over there, and then I got the one down there, which is Herman. These turtles are currently in quarantine. <clears throat> And what it is, they have an intestinal parasite called Caryospora. Parasites are common. Cats and dogs get them. Par turtles get them, too. They have to be three feces sample free of parasites before they can join the other turtles or go back to the wild. Rob here is a very naughty turtle. This is actually a repeat offender of getting to a hospital. Not our hospital. He is a transfer turtle. Now, normally, you also take the turtles back to where they're found, but we're hoping not to take Rob because he likes to hang out at a pier and try to get the fishing hooks to have the food on them for free. And the first time, he was hooked in the flipper and uh, had that removed. This time, he decided to eat the fishing hook, and so he had that fishing hook removed. Uh, he was transferred to us. Other facilities have a mass capacity. We do not. So we take a lot of other places overflow of turtles. A couple of days ago, we actually got 40 Kemp's Ridleys that were called, we call cold stun. Cold stunning is kind of like a hypothermia to you and I. And uh, turtles are very lethargic weak and they just need to be warmed up. And sometimes they get sick or get beat up by the wind and the waves. So hopefully once Rob is all cleared up and the tumor, I mean, the fishing hook ingestions all healed up, He'll go back to a while, but he kind of probably doesn't want to eat. His throat is probably a little on the sore side right now. Kiki <clears throat> had tumor. She is now tumor-free and looking quite well. And these two are green turtles. Now, green turtles actually get to be about 500 pounds, three and a half, four feet long. And they don't really look green on the outside. 
It's due to their diet of seagrass and algae it gives them a very green fatty tissue on the inside. So they're known for their green diet meat instead. And uh, they also eat jellyfish and squid. But sailors that used to travel in the ocean would round up these green sea turtles and throw them on board their ships on their backs. When a sea turtle is upside down, it cannot right itself. It's called a stay put position. And they can stay out of the water for a long period of time. And that used to provide those sailors that fresh meat. Here in the Keys, they used to have a turtle cannery where they used to can the meat for stews and soups. But in 1973, they passed the Endangered Species Act, so you can no longer harvest them for their meat, shell, eggs, or leather. But other countries do eat their eggs, just like we eat chicken eggs here in the States. And Kiki, there she is. Hi, beautiful. She is now tumor-free. But she's going to remain with us for about a year. Uh, we had to do the surgeries we use a co2 laser to remove the tumors and they can go through multiple surgeries to have the tumors removed but she feels really well right now so that's why she's very active and uh she hopefully we'll get her back to the wild about nine months time with no regrows over here is charlie and charlie came in weighing 176 pounds and charlie is a female and uh, she had a tumor, the second largest tumor I ever saw. It was a six pound tumor on her flipper on the back side. I'll show you her picture as well. And she is now tumor free. But Charlie was also attacked by a shark. There's the tumor. On the back of her shell, we have what we call rake lines. All those scratch lines on her shell, that is due to shark teeth. Sea turtles can do bird speeds of 35 miles an hour. They will twist, turn, and maneuver their bodies and use their shell just like a shield up to the shark's mouth so they can't get a bite of it. And so she's got all these rake lines, but because her shell's made of the same size her fingernail is, over time, it's going to grow out of her shell. If they're really deep, she might have a couple of scars, but she is one lucky turtle because she still has four flippers, a head and a tail, and there's no chunk marks out of her shell. Over here is one is Herman. We found out Herman is a girl. And she has the tumors as well. You can kind of see them on her. Around her flippers and her arms. Sometimes you're only looking at the, the top or the front. You don't only see the tumors underneath them. And so she has a lot of tumors on her. A lot of times, too, when they come in, sometimes her eyes will be covered. And that makes like a very sad or depressed turtle. They can't swim, see where they're going. So they don't want to swim. They don't want to eat. They have a very good sense of smell. They just don't feel like eating. So just by removing the tumors from their eyes, it will often perk up their personality. They'll actually start swimming and eating the very next day. But our turtles go see a veterinarian ophthalmologist. They go to the eye doctor. The eye doctor will move the tumors from their eyes and put them on cancer eye drops. Twice a day, they'll get taken out of the tank for eye drops. And twice a month, they'll pile up the seven turtles in the ambulance. And they all get to go on a field trip to Miami to the eye doctor. But they have to have one fully good working eye in order to return back to the ocean. So our turtles, though, this is M&M. Um, she has a lot of tumors. She's also very skinny. Green turtle. Uh, her neck is sunken in a little bit because she's so skinny. Those tumors a lot of times just suck the life out of them. And our turtles also get to go on another field trip. They get to go to a people hospital here in the Keys, and that's where they get their CAT scans done. Because the nurses can't say to the patient, well, hey, dude, what's your name? We usually sometimes write their names on the shelves for nurses there as they pop them through the CAT scan machine for us. And we're going to go down below and see some more. Our rehab staff actually live here on property. We do programs every day. That's what funds our hospital so the people are leaving. And we're right on the water, so we don't actually have to make salt water. We pump it in, and it goes through a filtration system here. But down here, i got a few more turtles. We're going to go see. So I got some little Kemp's Ridley's. Now we got 40 of these guys in the other day. This is the most critically endangered of all the species. Um, and what it is, the Kemp's Ridley's only get to be about 100 pounds and two feet long. They like to eat crustaceans. And they're also known as the ghost turtle. When they get bigger, they're very white and creamy colored underneath, especially these guys are kind of white underneath right now, but as they get older, they get very lighter in color. And that helps them hide in the sandy bottoms of the Gulf of Mexico. What makes them pretty amazing, too, is they can actually hold their breath when they're adults for up to five hours underwater if they want to. 
they're pretty amazing. So these guys were just came from Massachusetts from New England Aquarium. And they're what we call cold stun. A cold stunning is kind of like a hypothermia. The turtles are very lethargic and weak. And sometimes they get pneumonia and abrasions. Now, we won't return them back to Cape Cod once they're feeling well. They'll actually go down here in Florida to be released by Kennedy Space Center. Up there, it's restricted water. You're not going to find boaters or fishermen in there because it's where the rockets are launched from. So when they're ready to go, they'll get released. And they come with numbers on them. Now, our turtles, the people that rescue them, they actually get to name them. Because it's the people out there in the water that are actually rescued them. So here's a few more that are a little bit big. And you can see where this one's got little abrasions on it. Flippers might have been bit by something. Maybe a wound by an attack by a fish or a shark or something. But they're all getting care. We got 40 of them the other day. And that's a lot of turtles to get in at one time. Gumby here. We have him covered with shade cloth. He was a boat strike. And we don't want him to bang his shell. So we kind of just, he likes to be shaded a little bit. He likes to hang out. He's kind of down there under the thing. These white PVC things are their scratching posts. As the turtles are going through that growth spurt where, again, fish and stuff could get under their shell. It gets kind of itchy. Or if you've ever had a scab and it gets kind of itchy, they can uh, scratch your shells on it. Because usually they'll scratch your shells on corals and rocks out in the wild. But we don't have a lot of corals and rocks in here. So we built them all these PVC enrichment toys and they just use it to scratch your shells on when they get an itch. Then I got a few more little camps over here. They're so cute. And you can tell the ones that are feeling well because they're pretty active and you can tell the ones that aren't feeling as well. They're just not as active. But hopefully they'll all make it back out to the wild one day. You can see he's got a lot of abrasions on his face and flippers and stuff. That could have been from the wind and waves being beat up in the storms. This little guy, too. They're just so little. And then over here is Pico. Pico has his name on his shell. The real green turtle. You can see all the tumors on him. Just doesn't feel well. And in the back here on this green turtle... There is a huge tumor we have to remove. We can't remove the tumors right away. And the reason is this turtle is just not healthy enough to even have the surgeries. So you'll notice he's kind of in a shallow amount of water. So all he's got to do is just rest, eat, get his health up, and so we can start the surgeries hopefully soon. We're going to make our way around to some of the babies too. And over here is a turtle with a very funny name. Her name is actually Little Fat Brianna. We did not give her that name. The people that rescued her gave her that name. She's a loggerhead turtle who was hit by a boat. And she's waiting to go to a huge aquarium over in London. Now, we don't have a mass capacity of turtles we could take. We can break down tanks into smaller tanks. We have portable tanks. We have kiddie pools. We have research trailer tanks. And we have this big, huge pool. Problem we have are loggerheads. Loggerheads tend to be territorial and aggressive. You cannot put two loggerheads together. Uh, I have a loggerhead in with a bunch of greens over on that side. You just can't put two of them together except for her because she doesn't really like anybody. Well, she doesn't like anybody in her personal space, put it that way. Over here is an itty-bitty one that just came in last week. Let me open this up. This is a baby. He's not even a week old yet about. This is a hawksbills. Hawks bills tend to nest a little bit later than the rest of the turtles. So I'm going to pull it over. And so he's only about a week old now. Ooh, he's getting big in a week time. And what it is, is he was found in the nest. He didn't quite make it out of the egg yet. Now, it usually takes 50 to 60 days for a nest to hatch. Three days after the nest hatches, nesting surveyors, park rangers will go out to excavate the nest and count the eggs. And sometimes you find little babies in the nest. That didn't make it out like him. They all get stuck under roots and stuff. We'll also have bad storms out of sea. It doesn't always have to be a tropical storm or hurricane. We'll have gale force winds. And it just pushes little guys into docks, marinas, and beaches. And they're just tired out and need a chauffeur to give them a ride back out to the sargassum. Unfortunately, the sargasso patches where they spend the first years of life are now trash dumps. Everything floating in the ocean has to stop when you hit something. It's just our gas zone breaks down into smaller pieces of trash. And a lot of these babies eat a gut full of trash because they don't know any better. 
And then from May 1st, October 31st, it's lights out on the beach, turtles dig in the dark. So if they see an artificial light, they go in the wrong direction, and they end up in swimming pools and parking lots and all kinds of places they shouldn't. And so they end up coming to us. But down here, they are put red lights up and down the beaches. That is the color they filter out. So it's more of a safer light for the turtles not to get disoriented. And then birds will drop them. You never know where birds are going to drop a hatchling sometimes craziest places. So the basket, well, he's in a little bucket right now because they're feeding him. But he goes in the basket in the water because he's not quite a good swimmer yet. Like I said, he's not quite up to par just yet. He wasn't quite out of that nest and out of the egg when he came in. So he's still kind of getting uncurled and, you know, sucking up his yolk sac that he has underneath him. And he's doing pretty good. Like I said, he's been here a week now. Almost a week. Just a little guy. It's a hawk spill turtle. They're late nesters. Usually it's from May 1st to October 31st. It's lights out because that's when the loggerheads and greens all come in. But hawk spills tend to nest a little bit later. We keep this covered because if a bird comes in, they're lunch size. And down here, I have two loggerheads who are roughly a year old now. I have Ethel and Lucy. And they're in what we call the Head Start program. That means they get a head start at life. From the time that they are born, they are dinner on the dinner plate for something else. One in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Birds, crabs, bayfish, sharks, raccoons, everything wants to eat them. So by keeping them here until they're two years old, they'll be about two feet long. They will have a healthy immune system. And the only predator they're going to have to worry about at that size are sharks. In the meantime, there are little ambassadors. They usually get to go on field trips. They'll go to schools and summer camps, outreach program, library festivals. And usually every year, one of them even gets to go to church. They go to the blessing of the pets of the Catholic Church. But Ethel and Lucy are part of research. And what it is, the temperature inside your nest will determine whether your hatchlings are male or female. Warmer temperature nest, you'll have more female. Cooler temperature nest, you'll have more male. It's called hot chicks and cool dudes is the way to remember because alligators are the opposite. And so Ethel and Lucy, the researchers were doing studies to find out what our nests here in Florida are actually producing. If we're producing more male or more female. And the researchers believe in the last two years, we have not actually pretty much produced one male turtle because of the warmer climate change that they've all been female. Which you know what that means for gators then. We're producing a whole lot of bull gators. So we do know Ethel and Lucy are both girls. And they will go back to the wild at the end of next summer. Now you do notice too. They're only about a year old. Um, and what it's funny is when the little ones come in. The hatchlings. We have a nickname for them. We call them nuggets. Because they're only the size of a chicken McNugget. From a nugget size to this size in one year time. And that's pretty good. And let me put my hand so you can have an idea. You know, it's not a very big turtle. And over here, we have our main pool. This is the original swimming pool that was built with this motel back in the 50s. Didn't have a lot of freshwater pools. Freshwater had to be pumped in. And it's pretty expensive when you live on an island. So when the founder, Richie Moretti, purchased the property in the 80s, he did some upgrades. He put in a chlorine pool for his guests. And he turned this into what he called an environmental learning center. He would stock this with all different kinds of tropical fish you find down here in the Keys. So his guests staying at the motel could come and snorkel with the fish. Well, leave it to the kids in a very popular show at that time. The kids would ask Mr. Moretti, well, hey, Duke, where's all the turtles? Because back in the 80s is when the teenage mutant ninja turtles were born. So he thought, well, how cool would that be to have a turtle here? And he found out you can't. Well, at least you can't have a healthy one. They're an endangered species. He also found out there was a great need to help the sick and injured turtles of the Keys. So by obtaining a permit through FWC and having a local vet nearby, he was able to turn this into a rehabilitation center. And from there, it turned into a full-blown hospital. We are the first hospital, and we are the largest hospital. And so the turtles live here, but the fish you put in here died off. The fish in here now come through the tubes. It is connected to the ocean, so the water rises and falls with the tide. And the fish come in when they're nice and little, and there is no real predators in here for the fish. So the fish get really big, have a bunch of baby fish, and then we got to fish the fish out and throw them back in the ocean. 
This one right here is Con Lecce. Got a beautiful shell going on. He's going through a growth spurt. See how the scoots are outlined white there? He is tumor-free now, and he's just working on building up his immune system to go back to the wild. When they go back to the wild, they get something called a flipper tag. It is a little piece of jewelry that goes on their flipper, and it's got letters and numbers on one side. The other side says reward to the biology department of, and they're known worldwide. But here they also get a pit tag. It's a little microchip you put in your pets, now your cats and dogs. It goes in the neck or flipper of the turtle. You wave a scanner paddle over and you get information a whole lot quicker. There's also a turtle out there with a satellite tracker we have on her. Here it's in a race against other turtles. It's called Torridae Turtles. Her name is Maisie. We do a satellite track one. This turtle before me here is Kent. Uh, Kent is a girl. I call her my drama queen. If you watch, she squirts water out her nose like a fire hose. They actually all squirt water out their noses. She just does it very dramatically because she can. They don't need to drink all that salt water. They become dehydrated, so they expel the excess water out their noses. But on her, those are her lead weights on the side of her. Now, not all the turtles that get hit by boats become what we call paralyzed. Some of them, like Chance here, he's like one flipper he has no control over. The other side, he just can't use it at all. He's pretty much paralyzed. And I have uh, quite a few turtles in here. They're all hiding right now. They like to hide at the bottom and put their heads under rocks and stuff. Mm -hmm. But there are fish in here and other things. Yeah. And they just can't go back to the wild. And I'll tell you about my last turtle Christina, down here. this is fantastic. You're actually getting a bit better connection heading back closer to the facility. Sorry, um, you're really breaking up. Yeah, I was going to say, your, your connection uh, got, got worse as you got further away. Let me I'm try a different area to move. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. That better? We can hear you fine. Uh, yes. I can't hear you. No. Okay. <laughs> That's going to make questions interesting. Uh, mm. <laughs> let's see if we can get Christina all set up here, and then uh, we'll dive in with questions from you guys. There's over 300 kids tuning into this broadcast, which is crazy. So welcome in, everybody. How there we about go. Now? Can you? Nope. I still don't have you. I can hear you, though. <laughs> we can all hear you. <laughs> Oh, the fun of video. Let me try another area around the tank. Can you the hear me now? Yeah, we can still hear you. Totally. Let me put up in a banner. We we can hear you just fine. There we go. Perfect. Just fine. Check the bottom. <laughs> I can't hear you at all. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. I can, I can, I'm okay. trying to read your lips, so. Let me... Are you all right to go for questions? We might have to do a, a fun banner question period with all our class today. You all right to go for questions? Everyone can still hear and see me. Yes. Are you all right to go for questions? Yeah, go ahead. Perfect. All right. You'll have to type them because I can't hear you. So We will. Okay. Troubleshooting on the fly, everyone. All right. So what I'm going to do is head to... Uh, Miss Ramsey's class. So oh, actually, what would be really easy for me, I'm sorry to do this to all our classes, but what I'll do is if our classes can type their question in the chat bar on the right, it'll be really easy for me to copy it and put it in so that Christina can see it. Actually, so, it just came through. Oh, you just came through. You're good? Yeah, you're, you're good now. Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, oh, it just cool. came through all, all right. of a sudden. Good. Stay there. Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for taking us on such a cool tour and showing us so much. That was awesome, especially nice to see babies as always. Um, so what we're going to do is try and make this work with our, our classes live. I'm going to go to Miss Ramsey's class. They're joining us in Calgary. And Christina, if anything goes wrong with the thing, just let me know and I'll start typing the questions in a banner for you, okay? Okay. Hopefully that came through. Miss Ramsey's group. Hi, guys. Come on in. Have play. Um. How many, how many turtles do you get every year? How many? I uh, kind of make it. It's getting out a little bit again. How many turtles do we get every year? Roughly yeah. about a hundred turtles that are admitted to the hospital. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys. That was a quick first one. Miss McNeil's class joining us in Lethbridge. Nice to have you guys in. Come on in. Hi. Hi. The camera's right here, Kelly. There you go. How many? Um, how long do turtles? How long do turtles? Try a different spot. I'm losing you again. How long do turtles live? Go ahead, Miss McNeil. Class. Uh, she asked, "How long do turtles live for? What's their lifespan?" Very good question. Loggerheads and greens can live anywhere from 80 to 100 years, uh, and they mature at about age 25. 
The Kemp's Ridleys lived to be about 45 and matured about age 15. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Looks like we're getting good connection by the babies. I'm going to go to Miss Duncan's class. They're joining us in Durham in North Carolina. So many groups in North Carolina. Always love having you guys. So go for it. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the questions they had uh, for the turtles that have the damaged flippers, is it possible for them to get 3D flippers? Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't make that one out. Yeah, so let me see. I can hear you, so if you can oh, repeat it. Can you hear me? Yeah, so the turtles that have damaged flippers, uh, is it possible for get them to get like 3D printed flippers that you attach onto them? Um, they do, some places do prosthetics. We do not. And the reason, one of the reasons is, is salt water deteriorates everything. And so any kind of, you know, salt water just deteriorates everything. Two, it creates abrasion. So you can't keep any kind of prosthetic on any kind of marine animal for any lengthy amount of time. I know there is that dolphin winter that has that prosthetic tail, but they also can't keep that on that dolphin's tail all day long or we create abrasions by rubbing with the salt water. Yeah, great question. Thank you so much. Um, all right, Miss Hood's class joining us in Ackland, Pennsylvania. We're all over the continent today. This is very exciting. So Miss Hood, go for it. Hi, first of all, thank you for the work that you do at the Turtle Hospital. And a question is, is there a process for giving turtles their names? And then do those names stay associated with a tag number throughout the turtles' lives? So that if they were to go as, I think the turtle's name was Rob, if he ended up at multiple hospitals, would he have the same name? No, yeah. sometimes that happens where you don't get the information quickly enough. We had a turtle here. It's first time with name. It was named with Lou, and then it came back again to the turtle hospital. And the next people named it Sapphire, and Sapphire is actually in another aquarium somewhere else. So I think I don't know if they kept her name or not, but she might even have a third name by now. <laughs> but yeah, it's really kind of cool because we have a turtle here right now. Her name is Hanson Bowie, and she was a second. She's been back here for a second time as well and we know it was her because we ran that flipper tag and she was here from 1994 to 1997 and she left our facility here in november of 97 and she only weighed 35 pounds when she was rescued three years ago she now weighs 311 pounds but she can't go back to the wild unfortunately Great answer. I like that Sapphire became the, the subsequent name. That's a great follow-up name. Um, Ms. Hopkins class, we're going to go to London, Ontario. Then I'm going to take a few from YouTube and go back with all our live groups. And Ms. Hopkins, welcome in. Hi there. So my class has the question from Angelina. Would like to know, um, would turtles get infection in the water that they stay in? They can. I mean, you think about it, if they're out in the ocean, there's a little bit more chance for water to be, you know, circulated. But if they're in the same tank, our tanks get cleaned every day. Uh, it's just we're very busy right now because we have 40 turtles come in two days ago. And that's a lot of turtles we're caring for. And so they're a little bit behind this morning on getting the tanks cleaned and getting all 40 turtles, you know, extra 40. We already had 33 turtles and add 40 more. So currently we have 70, you know, well, not including the baby, 74 turtles now then. So at the hospital wow. alone. Yeah. Awesome, guys. All right. Let's take some from YouTube. Miss Wilbex class, you students have so many questions. <laughs> Welcome in to all of you. Uh, Eloise wants to know, what's the first turtle you got in the hospital? I don't really know what turtle that was uh, because when they opened up in 1986, those turtles went back to the wild, and I was actually still in school at that time. So... Um, I really don't know, and some of the records going way back then were not as well kept as we do now because it was paper and pencil, not computers like we have now. Yeah. Well, we'll have to track it down together. We'll do a scooping exercise. Bubble exercise. Butt's <laughs> been here since 1989, so, I mean, he was the first recorded turtle with the bubble butt syndrome, so he's been here since 89. We have a lot of questions about Bubble Butt. People are very fond of the name and the turtle, so thank you for that. Um, let's go to Mr. Shaddock's group, uh, 678 in Chalk River, Ontario. How big can the turtles grow to be? Well, leatherbacks, which we don't have any here currently, can get to be about 2,000 pounds, and they eat mostly jellyfish and squid, and that's a, you know, a lot of food for a turtle. But leatherbacks are a whole different type of turtle because they have a leathery shell because they're deep divers to go after those monstrous squid and monstrous, uh, you know, jellyfish. So if they were trying to dive deep and they had a hard shell, their hard shell would crack under pressure. So they have a very uh, leathery shell and underneath that leathery shell is cartilage. 
kind of like what your nose is made. So you can't preserve a leatherback shell. They are just an extraordinary animal. I'd encourage all our classes to check out leatherback turtles when we're done. Literally. Especially their have, mouth. <laughs> they're just the coolest creature. Like for some of our classes, grades two, three, four, five, your entire class, imagine every single student in the class around you, all of you would be about the same weight as that one turtle, which is Absolutely. really mind blowing. So do uh, check that out. All right, let's go back to our live classes. Ms. Ramsey's group, come Thanks. on back in. Christmas. <laughs> oh, go, quick, quick, quick. We're coming. Go, go, go. How many, turtles have, you, how much turtles have you rescued? You're gonna have to repeat that how one. I can hear you clearly, I can't hear them. How many what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how many turtles all time have you rescued at the hospital? Oh, I, there's, we released 2,000 back to the wild. I know that over 2,000, not including the babies. So there is a lot of turtles that have come to the hospital. Unfortunately, not all of them make it because if those tumor turtles have tumors on the inside, a lot of times there's not much we can do for them. Yeah, uh, but over 2,000 is unbelievable. Not to mention ones that have gone back to the aquariums and things like that. That is very, very cool. All right, Miss McNeil's class, come on back in. Welcome back, Lethbridge. Hi. Hi. How how do turtles eat the eat the um jellyfish? Yeah, how do they eat the jellyfish? How do they eat the jellyfish? They just bite into them. <laughs> uh, they actually close their eyes. And if you ever get a chance to search or Google a leatherback's mouth, it looks like something from like a kraken. It's all spikes to keep the jellyfish going down. It is the most amazing thing. And like the other species have a little patch of spikes in their throat. And that um, helps them make the jellyfish go down so they don't slide back out. They do seem to close their eyes when they're eating that jellyfish. Like the jellyfish can bother their eyes, but they're pretty much immune to the stings from them. Yeah. I like uh, uh, the Kraken reference. We don't often hear about that in Exploring Mother to Your Pants. So thank you kindly. Um, let's go back to Ms. Duncan's group. Come on in and then we'll take a couple from you two before wrapping up. Sure. Yeah. So um, I'm going to put it in the chat. Also, how do you know that turtles are repeat offenders and what factors determine where they're moved to, like the turtle that's being moved to London? You're going to have to repeat it. I can't yeah. hear them, but I can hear you. Yeah. No, no worries at all. I'm happy to repeat all the questions. So how can you tell when a turtle is sort of a repeat offender and comes back? How do you know it's the same turtle? And then is there any factor that determines why some get moved to certain places like London? Um. No, just availability if a turtle can go and they have the facility they can take the turtles. Like I said, a lot of times you can put a lot of green turtles together. You just can't put loggerheads together. You can have like one loggerhead with a bunch of other greens because loggerheads tend to be territorial and aggressive. So you just can't put two loggerheads together. But um, the way we know if they're repeat offenders, if they got like a pit tag or a flipper tag, there's also something called a living tag. And the researchers do this sometimes. They'll take a top piece of their shell and make like a dot from their shell on top and put it on the bottom piece of their shell they'll infuse it and the bottom piece of their shell to the top piece of their shell uh, they'll go down deep enough where it infuses in it and it kind of becomes what's called a living tag and these are for the turtles sometimes that are what we call research turtles they're part of a research study like these two uh, head start turtles are more than just you know being looked at to go on field trips and stuff like that they weigh, weigh them and measure them weekly to see how fast they're growing in an environment that they're kept in. And we, uh, you know, can watch how they eat and their behaviors are different from turtle to turtle. They're, they only they all have their own personalities, kind of like we do sometimes. So, Wow. Look at that delightful hello from our turtle friend. How nice is that? Uh, we're going to take four more questions, guys. This is great. Um, Ms. Hood, please share the question that you did in the chat in a minute because I absolutely love it. Um, we've got multiple questions on the theme of marine plastic. So Mr. Tunnard's class and Ms. Lumley's class, they want to know about turtles eating plastic bags. Does that injure them? Does it make them float if they eat them? Anything you can share with us on eating plastic bags? Yeah, so what happens is, is a lot of times when these turtles eat all this trash and garbage, it fills up their intestines. And they stop eating because they feel like they're full and they can't pass it and they get what's called an impaction and then they'll die from it. We just pulled 150 pieces of microplastics out of a little baby turtle um, that was only about five inches long. The wow. turtle did not make it, unfortunately, and they wanted to see why he died. We do what we call necropsies. And unfortunately, that little turtle had 150 pieces of microplastics. So everything floating of trash and garbage in the ocean has to stop 
when it hits something and it just breaks down into smaller pieces of trash and it's like a baby. You know, they'll go around, they'll put everything they can in their mouths. They don't know any better. They don't know that it's not food. And babies will eat all kinds of stuff if you don't watch them. Well, once the baby turtles are born and they go to the ocean, mama's not there to teach them anything. And so they just know everything you need to know to survive in the wild. But mama doesn't teach them plastic shouldn't be there. And they right. think it looks like snails and jellyfish and bivalves. So all these turtles eat a bunch of trash all the time and a lot sometimes they'll pass it and sometimes they'll re-eat it again and so you just got to be very cautious about how much plastics we use we really got to start reducing our intake and re reduce reuse and recycle it's very important that you know there's a lot of plastic in the ocean all that pvc and chemicals it doesn't yeah. need to be in the ocean the labels the glue that's on the labels of the plastics you know we uh, spend the entire month of September all month long talking about marine plastics. We had over 40 programs that month on that topic. So if you guys are keen to check that out, they're all on our YouTube channel still. And the thing I love about marine plastics is that it's a totally, it's an apolitical issue. No one looks at a beach covered in plastic. No one sees a turtle that has plastic in its stomach and goes great. Um, it's something that we all recognize as a serious problem and something that we can all do something about. So if you guys at home want to take care of turtles, that's a really big thing you can do. Don't waste, don't use plastic when you don't have to. Use reusable materials and it makes a really big difference for saving turtles and all sorts of wildlife. Awesome, guys. All, all right. Yeah, all kinds um, of materials. I did a study this summer on uh, yeah. doing nesting and uh, on the beaches, on the walks, the three days a week. I picked up 168 shoes, single shoes that had washed in onto our beach, one beach, 168 shoes. So keep your shoes on, Floridians, wherever you are, if you're tuning in, <laughs> it's very important. Um, cigarette butts is something that we've had uh, as a big issue as well. So there's lots of ways that people can do at home, uh, wherever they're joining from, from around North America to really make a difference for turtles. So keep that in mind and uh, we'll share some resources for you to do that if you want to just follow up with us via email. All right, Ms. Vandersell's class, uh, is there a most dangerous predator for turtles? Sharks. Sharks are the yeah. number one predator. Bull sharks are the, like, they like to eat them. Sometimes the turtles, they won't even eat the whole turtle. They'll just take a snack. Flipper here, flipper there. Save the turtle for another day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> once they get big enough, the sharks tend to probably leave them alone. But uh, when they're little, they're certainly an appetizing uh, morsel. That's why they block them from the birds as well. Well, sometimes uh, the turtles will bite them. Mm -hmm. Well, so at Ripley's Aquarium, we do a lot of programs at the Aquarium in Toronto, and there's turtles and sharks in the same tank, and consistently the sharks are the ones that are afraid of the turtles, but the turtles will constantly go for their fins. Um, they're very mischievous that way. Uh, <laughs> Miss Hood's class, if you guys have a question, I, I loved yours, so please do share it. <laughs> yeah, so in America, we are just coming off of the Thanksgiving holiday, so we were thinking about if turtles get a special meal on holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, or other holidays. Sometimes the turtles Any do. Special sometimes they'll get like yeah. like the loggerheads will like lobsters, and sometimes they'll get lobsters. The mm. green turtles, uh, they mostly get romaine lettuce, peppers, squid, cucumbers. They get a pretty variety diet as well. Already, it's just when we get like a recall on romaine lettuce or something that we have to change their diet, and they're not always happy with us. And then we had a lot of medicine in their food too, so. It's not really a special diet. They get a really good diet, though. Uh, we do, actually, they did go out and pull up some grass beds for the turtles the other day. And so I saw the bag of grass in one of the tanks there. Uh, some of the turtles can be very picky eaters sometimes. They like what they like, just like we do. But I think it's a nice lesson for all our kids that the turtles' sort of special meals are all vegetables. So that's a sign for you guys at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Make sure you go for those when you can. Yeah, um, green turtles or, eat green stuff. So we're not actually allowed to wear green clothing in the tank or the pools or we'll get bit as well. <laughs> we should do a lesson on that one day. How to avoid getting bit by turtles. Um, Ms. Hopkins, if you want to wrap us up with one more question, this has been fantastic, guys. Again, over 300 kids. Uh, we've got, I think, five states, three provinces, uh, all across Canada and the U.S. Uh, Ms. Hopkins, if you want to wrap us up, go for it. Sure, thank you. We have one last question from Matthew in our class. wants to know, what is the oldest turtle that you have there? The oldest turtle that you have? That is very hard to say because a lot of times when the bubble butts get their shell hit, their shell becomes deformed. 
Because, like, the way you tell a turtle's age, it kind of goes by the size of their shell and how much they weigh. They get put in a category of whether they're hatchling, a post-hatchling, juvenile, sub-adult, or adult turtle. Uh, I have a turtle here named Coasty. Um, he was rescued in 1999, and his bubble butt has stunted his growth. And so he hasn't grown at all since 99. And the way... I'm trying to find him if I can show him for you. But uh, he, right now, his size is only a juvenile. But by his age, he'd be an adult turtle right about now. Hmm. Very, very cool. This has been uh, so, so much fun. Thank you so much for sharing so much time with us today and for answering all our questions. Um, again, welcome into all the kids from all around Canada and the U.S. If you want to check out more on the Turtle Hospital, let me pull up their website for you guys on uh, in a banner on the screen. Two quick seconds. TurtleHospital.org. Uh, when it wants to work for me here, it will eventually pop up. Uh, but thank you guys so, so much for all your questions. Um, I'll share the Turtle Hospital link with you guys after the fact. It refuses to work for me right now. What we do at the end of every broadcast, I'm going to bring all our classes. So Ms. Ramsey, Ms. McNeil, Ms. Duncan, Ms. Hood, and Ms. Hopkins, if you want to join me in saying a big thank you uh, to our team at the Turtle Hospital. Thank you for joining us.